Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today's weekly channeling video is with a special guest, someone who I really enjoy talking to, is sort of like a mentor or advisor in spirit form to me. And you probably know her as well. If not, you, it would be good for you to get to know her and her work and her business. Her name is Louise Hay. Louise Hay is the founder of Hay House Publishing and she created a whole incredibly booming business based upon her strong values of believing in people, of equity, of opportunity, and she truly, truly was a trailblazer in human form and in the afterlife. She is an incredible mentor and guide that you yourself can connect with and talk to. And so today in this weekly channeling video, video, we will talk to Louise Hay and I'm gonna ask her for some really important advice about how we manage the energy of our attitude and our mood. Good question, huh? Let's hear from someone who can give us some great advice and I hope insight about this topic. Louise, welcome. It's always lovely to connect with you. It's so easy to channel you <laughs> and to have contact and communication with you. Uh, conversation, she really feels like a mentor to me now. This has kind of evolved over the past um, a month and a half or so, and so I do appreciate that. Um, in your human life when you were a person, Luis, I didn't really follow a lot of your personal healing work, your self-healing, self-love work, but I know that your body of work is something that's a legacy that others who are really struggling with things like self-doubt and uh, self-worth and anyone, anyone who has a desire to learn more about themselves and to really focus on a heal, healing as a way of, of loving, loving yourself and then ability to love others, I think your body of work would be helpful to many. So can you speak to the subject of how, I, we really need some advice here, some insight. How, as people, we get so affected <laughs> by stress. We have stress. We have a daily grind. We have expectations of family, relationships, work, um, society. We have our own expectations, our own high standards, our own. There's so much that we're, we're moving in and around and that's part of our human experience that energetically it gets heavy. And not just heavy, but it just, it feels a little like mucky, like sticky, and it doesn't, sometimes we can't flow freely. We can't feel inspired or we can't feel creative because we feel so uh, much of this energy that I would just describe as stress because I think the viewers would understand it as stress. But it's, and, it, and sometimes more than other times, it affects us more. And so I'm wondering um, how, in your wise advice, how can we keep positive? How can we keep our energy uplifted and feel inspired? How best can we do that? She says, well, first of all, to acknowledge the fact that you are not alone is an important part of this puzzle, a very important part. You see, so often when you begin to feel low or you have moments where your energy does not suit you in what you are normally used to producing, connecting, or engaging with, you can afford yourself this acknowledgement, and that is you are not alone. And I'm speaking of the many spiritual helpers, the healing guides, who are ready to assist you at any time and at any point in your human life experience. They are always present to serve your spirit. And as well, you know, in the human existence that you have, you have come for connection, for the detailed human relationships that you have that sometimes do cause you pain they cause you to pain, to feel pain, but they also provide you with the opportunity to stretch yourself, to grow beyond limitations 
or perceived notions of limiting beliefs and give you the opportunity to fully experience this life that you have been gifted. It has been given to you by your request and so it is for you to be here now and to participate in the experiences that come to you. Can you give us some real tangible advice about, so how do we, I'm trying to, I'm really struggling with trying to apply, like give us some concepts, some, some examples or tools that we can apply in our human life to keep ourselves while we're going through all these human experiences, while we are having pain or struggles, or people might be watching that are going through divorce or have been just diagnosed with an, a major illness or any number of things. Someone might be getting married and all of these things create the energy that, that ultimately leads almost to the questioning of our, am I enough? Am I enough to manage this, to handle this? Do I deserve um, the energy of this or did I create this? And if it's something bad or if it's something good, there's all these questions that we ask. We question our worthiness and our value. Can you speak on that and can you give us some tangible tools to help with this energy so that we know who we are, we know who God created us to be, we know that we're part of the universe and that is vast and limitless. And when I say that, I know it, I know it, but the upper part of my energy spheres, my mind cannot accept that in all cases. And in most cases, it challenges me as well as I'm sure many of you on that con these concepts. Can you please give us some guidance? She says, oh, I would be happy to. To begin with the promise that life is worth it is perhaps the best place to begin. It is indeed worth it to have the depth of experience that you have. You must have some effort, some, what you would say in your mind is risk. We, in the spiritual context, would prefer not to use that term. However, the costs do, do not come close to exceeding the benefits. The benefits are far, far greater to you and to those you touch in your lifetime. And you cannot know this until after, until upon the moment of life review, whether it occurs while you are still in your body but not in consciousness, or whether it occurs upon the transitioning process for you. And you know that end of life is not the only place that you can gain this perspective. It is for you here, in moments like this, and opportunities such as these, to recognize what is being laid out before you. Recognition. In your mind's eyes, it would be awareness. You ask for a tool, a simple tool is awareness. Be aware. In order to be aware, you must be awake. To be awake for your life might sound kind of silly, but if you express, if you can consider for a moment that this is the morning of your life, and not the evening of it, regardless of your age, regardless of your circumstance, or where you feel you are limited or lacking. There is not a deficit in the morning. Everything is fresh. It is brand new. And it is in these images that I gift you as your tools, as your simple reminders. You see, God that created the universe, the cosmos, you, and indeed your earth has provided you with all of these signs and symbols, whether it be a bird flying across the sky at the moment that you are experiencing the need and the desire for freedom, the acknowledgement that you truly are free, or whether it be the images that you may see of weeds growing in the grass, that flower, and become what some would consider the dandelion weed and what others might consider 
a beautiful flower. The perspective that you have has been granted to you, for it is a choice. You have choice constantly and consistently, you have choice. And in these symbols and these signs that were created for you to support your journey here in your lifetime that you have chosen, the simplest thing to do is to be in awareness, to be awake for the life that you are participating in, that you have requested to be part of, and to consider it all the morning and utilize this metaphor and this imagery. Oh, sure, I could suggest to you to meditate, but would you actually do it? Perhaps for a while, and then you might change your habits. And changing habits is okay, and it is necessary to do to give you flavor, variety. But there are other things, such as EFT, the emotional freedom technique, referred to as well as tapping. There are so many holistic healing modalities that you can explore and techniques you can use for yourself. You can find all of these resources free. Many are free on the web. You can also find them, of course, as you found this video and to look, look that up and search for different things based upon what it is you feel you need, whether it is abundance or whether it is self-worth or value or simple encouragement, motivation. There are certainly many, many forms of these things, but it is for you to look them up, to discover, to care enough about the way that you feel. You say you want to be inspired. You say you want to feel good. But in order to do that, you must care enough about yourself and the way you feel to change it. And that occurs over time with multiple tools, resources, and with simple action, sometimes as simple as being awake and to recognize when those tools are right in front of you. And all it takes is for you to use your finger and do a search and everything could change for the positive for you. You could get that inspiration that you are seeking by doing that. And if you choose to not do that, that is indeed a choice. Then you are choosing to stay in an energy that is lower than what you desire, that is lower than what you need to be productive and to feel creative. So you see, it's all about your choice, the choices that you make. And then she says, she gives me the energy of there's freedom in the choosing of things. There's a tremendous amount of freedom in the choosing of things. And I get the sense from her that sometimes the lull is needed in the energy, the dip in our energy is needed. And I know this for myself from practice and experience and, and doing psychic work with people and doing coaching work as well, we do need a time to rest, even if it's not convenient. It doesn't work into our busy schedules and all the deadlines that we might have or the needs our, our family, our children, our work has of us. And it doesn't seem convenient. We still need this time. We need downtime, rest time. And if we can lean into that and allow for that to be the case when it's showing up, if the lull is not to just push through, push through, try to get better, try to get better, try to feel better. Maybe the lull is serving a purpose to rest for some quiet so we can reboot and revamp some of our energy systems, our grids, our matrix, the energy that flows through us and around us and all of the fibers of our being and all of the layers of the multiple lifetimes and experiences that we have had that impact us. <sighs> Thank you very much, Louise. Always insightful, always wonderful to speak with you and to connect with you. And I thank you. I thank you so much for being here. And I hope for all of you that you've been able to feel the energy of Louise Hay as she has been speaking to us and through the Above Life channel, which I'm always so appreciative for you to be here and to watch and experience the energy of these channeled 
channeled messages and they're so insightful. So you've been watching an afterlife conversation with Luis Hay. I hope you've enjoyed it. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this conversation with Luis Hay and leave some comments below if you have ideas for future questions or things you'd like to know more from Luis or from other um, wonderful teachers in the afterlife, other wonderful trailblazers and insightful, empowered um, energy spirits that we could connect with. That would be great to know. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope so that you will live your life because this, this is your life. This is the gift of your life. So live it. Just live it. Live it. Thanks for watching.